Alright. Hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show, and I'm your host, Frankie Slauson, and today I got a pretty big guest. Uh, if you guys are a big fan of the horror industry, uh, or just any horror movies alone, you, you know this guy pretty much by heart. Uh, I give you a really big guest that I have today, Mr. Michael Berryman. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Sean. How are you? Hey, I'm doing <laughs> doing okay. Uh, it's uh, about 10, 12 your time and 12, 12 my time. We're kind of redoing this uh, this part here because uh, my recording wasn't working, but now it's working just fine. That, that's a good thing. <laughs> but we were talking about uh, about weird science, and then we were talking about, uh, I think that was the last thing that we were, we were talking about, and... Uh, you were in, uh, you had a part in that movie as one of the uh, uh, deformed biker gang, and and how did that uh, how did that kind of come about? Well, I, I, I got a phone call from my agent at the time, and he said, "Hey, uh, um, here, uh, let me send you the script." He sent me the script, and he says, "Here's you know, here's your scenes, and it's like a lot, of, you know, some nerd getting, uh, uh, you know, put a girl, uh, you know, the powers, you know." She, they get to deal with all the bullies and get their come up and then it be kind of that I, uh, time I, I didn't know uh, Vernon Wells. I met Vernon and became very good friends. Uh, great working with him. I, I liked the Road Warrior connection. Uh, that was kind of cool. And then Kelly was just, just you know, and delightful. And, and then... Uh, you know, there's this guy named uh, Robert Downey Jr. who uh, just really, really impressed me. I, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, 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 the boys were, were terrific. Uh, um, uh, Chet, the brother, was hilarious. Everybody had a great job. But uh, Robert really stood out in my in my eyes as a, um, an up and coming major talent. Uh, he just had depth to him that that reigns so easy. He makes it look so easy. And uh, kind of like a Johnny Depp uh, person. So, um, Robert, if you ever hear this, uh, put me in the same company uh, as uh, Mr. Depp. But, you know, I've been following his career ever since. And, yeah, it's just been a real treat. It's nice to you know, meet an actor when they're young and, and, and just follow their career and, and um, see how that, how it continues. He's done a tremendous job. But it was fun. You know, when, when we had our scene where we come into the living room, uh, John says, okay, here's the deal. This is, uh, you guys play it up really, really uh, heavy so the boys can really be heroic, you know. And, and that's what we did. And it, it, yeah, it became a uh, kind of a cult film, you know. Oh, yeah. Good, good job. Yeah, and it's hard to believe now that uh, after all those years, you know, damn, damn near almost 30 years, uh, since the movie came out, that uh, now Robert Downey Jr. Uh, is now Iron Man. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, uh, Iron Man's pretty rocking. I, it, it, it's um, it's great action film, a little story. It's a lot of fun, um, and I very much appreciate the uh, the underlying heavier theme you know, about war, the war industry, uh, uh, the history of humanity on Earth, and uh, our our lack of ability to. Um, Bring it all together. I'm a, I'm a product of the '60s. I was in college in the '60s, and you know we got a lot of flack from people who just didn't appreciate what we were trying to say. And actually, uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful era. Um, you know, golly gee whiz, who uh, um, could we love one another and not have war? Could we not turn the planet into a toilet? Could we not uh, make every wonderful species extinct, uh, and etc. And it goes on and on and on. Um, um, so it, it touched on a lot of important themes for me. Um, I, I could go on <laughs> for days, uh, but uh, I think the, the film capsulated a, a lot of themes very easily. Uh, oh. Just dropped you. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I'm still here. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm getting a, another call. Let me check it really quick. Okay. I'm sorry. Hang on. And we're chatting with Michael Berryman, a legendary horror actor. And uh, very nice guy, very nice guy. <coughs> I'll just pause the recording here. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. So uh, you know, it just uh, 
I was telling you this earlier, be, well, the first time where we recorded this, and uh, now we're saying the second time since it never recorded, uh, that the fact that uh, when I announced on Facebook that I was going to be interviewing you, my Facebook page just blew up because you're such a big actor, and it's just like everybody uh, that that uh, is friends with me uh, knows you from a various amount of films that you've done, and you've done a lot of them. Uh, what, how do you rank yourself as a, as a celebrity? Um, well, um, interesting question. Um, um, but I just want to mention on your, uh, mention of Facebook, I, I really established my Facebook page. So the one that was up before was co-mingled, uh, and I, we finally got that straightened out. So I'm on Facebook, Michael Berryman, um, and I, I, I'm, I maintain it myself. Kind of Neanderthal, uh, but uh, oh well. I do, I do, you know, check messages. I do, you know, some posting. Um, it's not an elaborate site, but uh, you can uh, do a friendly quest, and 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 um, um, a lot of people know, you know, where I am. I'm going to be at Detroit City uh, um, Motor Nightmare, um, Motor City Nightmares uh, this coming weekend, and then I go to Rhode Island to film uh, Chad Verdi production, uh, Tommy Danucci's. Uh, Writer, director, star, a movie called Army of the Damned. Um, so that's what's happening recently. But to answer your question uh, specifically, um, I consider myself a, a working actor that has um, come up through the ranks. Uh, it, it wasn't. It was not a profession I had chosen. It just sort of. Uh, um, I was discovered by George Powell. Got a part in the movie, and then his casting director put me in the Cuckoo's Nest, and then Hills Have Eyes after that. So. It turned into uh, um, an opportunity to, you know, uh, make a living, travel, and meet meet people. So, I think the success is, is in uh, for me not so much as my ranking as an actor. Uh, I I try to do the best work I can. I've gotten um, you know good reviews. Uh, my X Files episode is probably one of my most proud moments. Um, and I'm looking here at my desk. I've got a a, a foot and a half. Uh, pile of uh, fan letters from all over the world. <laughs> wow. um, I even got a box from one of my fans from France. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, the food sent me all kinds of wonderful French uh, cookies and gourmet pâtés. Uh, and I handle all my uh, fan mail myself. Um, so I, I feel that there's a success there because I, I, uh, I'm just the same guy I was before I got discovered by George. And when I go to conventions, um, the fans are very responsive, and and uh, we just kind of hang out together and have a good time. You know, it's um, 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 it's something that I, I that supports my family, and I love art. I love the art of storytelling. I love film, and this gave me an opportunity to, you know, um, stay immersed in, in in that field. So I'm very grateful to George Powell for giving me my break and. Um, I try to make each character that I have uh, created a little different. I, I try to bring something new, even if it's a nuance. I mean, I've had films where, uh, like in the Lord of the Salem, I'm where I've got mutton chops and, and, and a hat. I've had films where I've worn hair. Uh, the Crow, Skull Cowboy, that's cut out because Brandon. Overall, I try to make the characters a little, bring something new each time. Oh, that's so, uh, that's good. Yeah, that's what I try to do. Well, that's good, you know, and, and uh, it, it seems like that with your acting. I mean, it's, you know, I think yeah, because of the way you 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 look, you know, you you look you look like somebody that would be perfect for like a, a horror movie, just because uh, uh, you know, because it just kind of fits what you look like more or less. And and I, I was reading like in your bio, kind of that you were born like. A, with uh, what without sweat glands and hair and stuff like that. How was that like living yeah. growing up uh, when you were a kid and realizing that? Stuff, I, I, it was not easy. I, I, I had hair when I was born, but uh, the equivalent of first grade, at whatever age that is, I didn't do first grade. I went to children's hospital. My dad was in a, in a brain surgery. My mom and nurse. They got me to a good doctor, and my my skull was fused. It had no soft spots, no fissures that would expand when the brain uh -huh. grew larger over the skull. So they had, they had to, you know, give me a haircut. They had to cut through my skull, you know, separate it with some chips from my hips. 
the pieces of bone so it could grow and, and, and shape normally, and I'm grateful that it did. I've got good vision and, you know, a good brain. My dad used to say, hey, uh, you can get better grades. You have a good brain. I've seen it. Oh, thanks, Dad. But, um, yeah, I, I, was, I don't have sweat glands. I can't dissipate body heat, so I have to be a little cautious when it's hot. And, um, you know, production companies are pretty cool about that. You know, well, yeah, we have portable AC units, and uh, if it's warm and uh, there's a portable AC unit, it uh, benefits everybody because sets can be pretty uncomfortable. So oh, yeah. um, that's how I address that. Um, there are other you know, uh, medical issues that uh, you just learn to deal with it. And uh, mm-hmm. one of my biggest secrets there is learning how to eat real healthy food mm-hmm. and you know, supplement properly and exercise. It's like my buddy Lou Ferrigno. It's, it's a <laughs> lifestyle, oh, which wow. is correct. You know, it's uh, kind of like. There was an old guy on TV back in the 50s and 60s named Jack LaLanne, very famous. Uh, so, um, you know, being respective of what your gifts are, because, you know, we could slip on a bar of soap tonight and, and, and be all gimped up, you yeah. know, uh, a few minutes later. So I kind of look at life as, you know, every day is a gift, and I try to, you know, do the best I can. And um, we all have our ups and downs, but probably one of the best um, results of, of being born with a, a physical difference was that I got to meet um, well thanks to George I got to be on a you know I was on a set with Brandon Lee and I met a guy by the name of Paul Newman huh. and Paul Newman and I had a conversation in North Carolina and he invited he gave me a phone number to call with regards to a group that he's involved with and uh, the people that started this group were uh, Arnold Palmer, Paul Newman, and uh, Storm and Norman, uh, General uh, Norman Weisskopf. Uh, huh. Is that right? No, not Weisskopf. Uh, Schwarzkopf. Okay. And yeah. it's called the Bogey, Bogey Creek Gang, affiliated with the Hole in the Wall Gang. Basically, uh, it's um, it, it runs through the University of Florida, and we find parents with children that have facial cranial anomalies. And it's, you know, in America, we don't have a very good health. Um, care for our citizens, yeah. um, you'll wind up, you know, at the end of your life, uh, bankrupt with a stack of bills, and whoever, you know, follows behind your demise uh, is stuck with all your bills. It's very, it's, to me, it's a tragedy, uh, especially since we just love to spend so much money, money on, on war. Sure. Um, um, there's, there's much better ways to go about it. Um, anyway, um, I uh, actually had some facial reconstruction done uh, about 15 years ago after I had been to the camp and worked and mentored and talked to parents about what the children were going through medically and emotionally. And I, I do a lot of, um, um, I'd say, uh, well, I've done a lot of uh, public speaking at the schools for you know, drug awareness, fear awareness, bullying, um, a, lot, a lot of various... Uh, activities uh, that I never would have had uh, the invitation to had I not uh, been thrown out into, you know, in front of the camera. Oh, yeah. So it raised a lot of awareness, and when people said, wow, who and what are you about, and gave me a, a platform to speak about things that are important, and um, it also gave me a chance to make a living because I lost a lot of, a lot of jobs due to uh, skin conditions and being too hot and yeah. what have you. So I'm very grateful that I have worked with the chemistry for almost 40 years, and, and um, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, field. So all of the bullying and bullshit I put up with as a kid, um, um, it kind of turned into a, a, a happier re, uh, um, a result, which I'm grateful for. Uh, but it was very tough, uh, you know, uh, looking different as a kid. Kids are mean. But I had friends who, like, I had one good friend had polio. He walked funny, had crutches. And so the bullies would pick on me. But then when they saw Billy, they would uh, trip on there. They would be mean. And I would get, I mean, even in grammar school, I, I would just, um, I never learned uh, how to contain my uh, my temper. Yeah. And uh, I would just. I don't care if there was three of them, they were all five times my size. I would just jump in their face and go for a jugular. <laughs> oh, and, you yeah. know, I, I had to curtail that activity because, you know, uh, 
people know what's going on. I said, well, you've got a bunch of bullies, and, and if you don't take care of this, uh, you know, it's going to cause problems, you know. Yeah. And then one, uh, years went by, and one of the bullies from my high school uh, was working a real crap job, uh, you know, in the loading dock one day, years and years and years later. I didn't bring it to his attention, but so I'm going, oh, wow, that's too bad. He was captain of the football team. He had a girlfriend. He was good looking, whatever. But bullies come in all shapes and sizes, yeah. and, um, and it's really unnecessary behavior. Yeah, that's for sure. So, it seems like nowadays yeah. that that's kind of the, uh, you know, everybody, you know, can be a bully sometimes. And, and but they're trying to. I, I don't know. I guess they're trying anyway to try to find ways to prevent that. But I think, uh, sadly enough, and I hate to hate to be all negative, but I think bullying is going to be around for forever. I think you know they 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 can try to they can try to control it, but that's all they're ever going to do. You know, they'll never stop it. Well, the best the, the best thing to deal with it is uh, you know go about your life. You know, they become very problematic. Uh, you know, they need any counseling or they need to go to jail. Yeah. But basically, it, it needs better parents. Yeah. It needs better parents. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you're married or whatever, you know, don't bring a baby into this world unless you, you know, unless you have a clue, you know, to your emotional stability, uh, you know, what can you really offer this kid and um, things like that, you know. It's a shame to have kids grow up just to be cannon fodder or to be criminals or, you know, following the footsteps of mom and dad. Um, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of excuses. Well, you know, I only had this, I only had that, this, that, and the other. Sure. But it comes down to certain choices. So sometimes it, it's very difficult. Of course it's difficult to kind of break away on your own and, and be your own person. And um, so uh, I tell kids all the time, I said, if you can turn your hobbies your healthy hobbies into a career you're doing a, you're doing real good oh you yeah know? and um so I, I try to stay positive but when i see uh hideous behavior uh, i call it the way i see it oh sure you know and, and yeah and i think that's what you should do yeah and yeah. and uh with that uh I was going to mention, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to promote at all or anything that you're certainly <laughs> yes, working absolutely. on absolutely uh, yes uh i i uh uh, I have a film that came out about two years ago. It did not get a theatrical. They, they, they did a Netflix and Amazon first. It's a wonderful, dramatic piece starring myself and Eddie Furlong, uh, filmed in Canada. It's beautifully done. We shot it in like two and a half weeks. It's called Below Zero. And it's, it's been at film festivals all around the world. Um, I would love to see it on a... Uh, a theatrical release. It's probably some of my very best work. Uh, Below Zero, definitely check it out. And then there's two other really fun uh, freebies you can find on the internet. One is on YouTube, and um, a woman who has a possessed it's a, real, it's a short, very, very funny. I just did this a couple months ago. It's called Hell's Kitty. Oh. Hell's Kitty, episode number 10. Okay. You can find it on the internet. It, it is delightful. It, we're kind of working with my agents to, and producers to see if we can't maybe get it on, on a cable channel because it's delightful. But Hell's Kitty episode 10. And then uh, my friend, my dear friend, Susan Lanier, who was in The Hills Have Eyes. She played Brenda, the blonde. Okay. Um, she was married to a very famous musician named Delaney Bramlin. They were actually at Woodstock. Oh, wow. And... Um, we did a music video about the dangers of internet dating, and it's also on YouTube, and uh, her name is spelled S-U-Z-E, Lanier, L-A-N-I-E-R, hyphen, Bramlett, B-R-A-M-L-E-T-T, and it's called, the song is called, Watch What You Ask For. Okay. And it is hilarious. Uh, so those two I would love to promote. And then, of course, I'm doing uh, Army of the Damned, uh, Tommy, Tom DiNucci's film, uh, Chad Verde production in Rhode Island. We start filming in about a week. Um, so uh, those I'd love to promote. Okay. And um, more to Salem, uh, I went to the premiere the other night, and Sid Haig and I are completely cut out of it. You just see his for a split second. Um, and as far as what, um, what I think of the movie, I would just say if you go to the uh, New Orleans uh, 
um, I think it's New Orleans Times, and I think it's N O L O um, right slash Lords of Salem. We did a, a very honest review of the film, which I think is the best response to. Because I'm going to get a lot of response. How come you and Sid aren't in it? You're advertised that you're in it, and, but um, uh, I just uh, say go to uh, the New Orleans site and and, <laughs> and read an honest preview. Uh, I like working with Rob. Um, you know, Battle Street Jacks is a lot yeah. of fun. He's a great guy. And. Uh, uh, the last question I have for you before we uh, close out this interview, it, and I kind of ask this to a lot of the bigger, bigger time celebrities, and, and I figure since you fit that category, uh, you, well, you, you. you like you like giving advice, so I want to I want to get some of your advice. What advice would you have for somebody who's uh, just starting to get into the film industry and would like to make that their career? Uh, well, um, I, I I've, I've seen wonderful scripts sit on my desk for years that never got a studio to support them. What I would recommend is uh, get a good writing program, you know, either Final Draft or a screenwriter. And when you sit down to write, write, um, you know, you have your idea, of course, write until there's nothing left. And then go back to the beginning and start sifting through it and, 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 and make each morsel very concise. Um, make your characters as uh, rich as possible and know what it is you're trying to say because you only have like, you know, an hour and 20 minutes. As far as getting it produced, um, if, if you win the lottery and you can, you know, hire a production company, great. Otherwise, uh, it's amazing what some of these new cameras can do. Like even these Sony uh, um, uh, have video uh, and cameras. Some of these new cameras have, have video capabilities. And they're getting better every year. So I would say you know, it, it's not a bad idea to have complete artistic control. And then, you know, of course, copyright everything with the Writers Guild, etc. cetera. Um, and then kind of, you know, kick it around at conventions or in your local neighborhood or on the Internet. But number one, make sure, make sure it's, it's, when you're ready to release it that it, you're really happy with it. Do the best job you can and protect your artistic artistic efforts, um, and then, you know, start getting feedback, um, and you never know who might look at it, you know, and, and, um, and I wish everyone the best. I, I wish there were more theaters in the United States, and yeah. you see plenty. Yeah, but, we, uh, uh, now we have the internet, download, Amazon, etc., Netflix. Um, so there you have it. Okay. Okay. Well, no, I I definitely want to say I appreciate the fact of doing this with you because I, you know, I, I got a hold of you on. Well, I, I sent you that email probably about a week ago or whatever, and then you responded back to me uh, on Sunday, and then you told me to get a hold of Judy, and uh, it's kind of kind of neat uh, how this whole works with social media and everything because uh, I don't think if it wasn't for Facebook and stuff, uh, I don't think we would be chatting today, and so I I just want to so I just want to say thank you for just. Uh, you know, coming on a, a little guy's show, since you're a big guy, coming on a little guy's show, and, and uh, being my 35th guest uh, this whole season is uh, very cool, and uh, I'll definitely share this interview with you when it goes up live. Sweet. All right. Well, uh, thank you for, thank you for uh, you know, uh, getting in touch, and like I said, uh, uh, whoever gets this, you know, um, all I can say is take care of one another, make tomorrow a better day, and, um, um, hey, um, you know, if you're, you're above ground, everything kind of works, uh, you know, you can walk without falling over, you know, the basics, uh, be grateful, you know, be humble, stay away from assholes, and, uh, try not to be engaged in, uh, mean people's behavior, and, uh, uh, you know, appreciate yourself, and make, and make tomorrow a better day, because you can do it. All right, Michael. Thank you once again for doing this interview with me. I appreciate it. That was a pleasure. All right, bye. All right, everybody. That was the legendary Michael Berryman. And uh, beyond legend, I, I could say, somebody who belongs to the Hall of Fame. I'm pretty sure he's probably been in a few Hall of Fames for, for acting, but never asked him that question. I mean, there's a lot of questions I could have asked, but uh, he's been asked millions of times. But in my interviews, I kind of like to do things a little bit differently. 
uh, not just because it's it's my interviews and I'm doing it my way, but just because I I prefer to ask as many different questions as I can that may or may have not ever been asked. So, yeah, <laughs> and I was only given so much time. If I was given like an hour or so or an hour and a half, I <coughs> I probably would have uh, asked a lot more. But go only give about half an hour. That's that's enough time to to, to ask as many questions as you can, and. Uh, yeah, so I just want to say personally thank you to uh, Michael Merriman for being a part of the show. Thank you to his manager, Judy Fox, for uh, setting this up. And thank you to all you uh, for listening because uh, if it wasn't for you guys, if it wasn't for the passion that I have of uh, doing this and, and everything else, none of this would be happening right now. So, uh, hey, you know, you never know what you can do and, you know, the one thing about it is, like, I don't get paid for these interviews. This, this is all... These last 35 interviews or 34 interviews that I've done, besides this one, uh, I've, I've never gotten paid for and I've never gotten paid for this one either. But it's all about passion. And who knows? Maybe the more big people I find, maybe one day uh, things may change. But until then, I'm Frankie Slauson, and uh, thank you for enjoying this interview. And if you you know have any advice or any uh you know, want to suggest any people I should try to find. Uh, make sure they're actually people that aren't so famous currently anyway. Uh, just find somebody that's actually uh, maybe low-key that was famous but not as famous anymore because uh, that seems to be how it works for me sometimes. Anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and uh, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time for another great Frankie Slauson show on YouTube.com. <laughs>